In this video I'll be giving a walkthrough of all the companies in the NZX50 index, representing 50 of the largest publicly traded companies on the New Zealand exchange. I'll be giving a brief intro to what the company does, how much it makes and some high level trading data. Nearly every one of you watching will own at least a small slice of one of these companies, either directly through the likes of Sharesies or indirectly through an investment fund such as KiwiSaver or SmartShares. I hope by sharing this information you find it useful and can find new opportunities available by investing in New Zealand. To invest in any of these companies directly, you can do so through Sharesies, Jardin or ASB Securities. Indirectly on the other hand, you can invest in a diversified mix of these through ETF providers such as NZX SmartShares or a range of other fund and KiwiSaver managers such as Kernel, AMP and ANZ. If you're new to the channel and want to learn more about investing and personal finance, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all my future content in this space. Starting off, we have a company that everyone should know, and that is Air New Zealand. As our national airline carrier, they carry people and cargo on domestic and international air routes. They were founded in 1940, are headquartered in Auckland, and have a revenue in excess of 2.3 billion each year. Since COVID, the business has been heavily impacted with a significant decline in its stock price, a halt on paying dividends, and have been making a loss since. Today they have a market value of $3.4 billion, and will be one to watch as more people start flying again in 2023. Second up, we have ANZ Bank, which is one of Australasia's largest financial service providers. They serve retail, commercial, and institutional clients around the world, but mainly in Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands. It was founded back in 1835, even before the Treaty of Waitangi was signed, and is headquartered in Melbourne, Australia. Their revenue is around $29 billion a year, and they have a market value of $76 billion, making it one of the largest companies listed on the New Zealand exchange. Its dividend yield is just over 6%, and it currently trades at a PE ratio of 10.24. Third, we have Argosy Property, which invests in and manages a 2.2 billion portfolio of mainly industrial and commercial real estate assets. The company was founded in 2002, is headquartered in Auckland, and has a revenue of around 130 million a year. The market value of Argosy is just a tad under a billion, and they pay a dividend of around 6% based on the latest pricing. Fourth, we have Arvita Group, which owns a number of retirement villages and rest homes across New Zealand. It was founded in 2014, is headquartered in Auckland, and has a healthy revenue of just over $200 million a year. The company has a market value of $800 million, they pay a dividend yield of 4.78%, and have a PE ratio of 3.74 times, presumably due to the large gains that they've had in property prices over the past year. The fifth NZX index component is Auckland International Airport, which of course owns New Zealand's largest airport and all of its associated businesses. The management company was formed in 1988 and for the year ending mid-2022 had a revenue of around $300 million despite spending a decent chunk of it in lockdown. The company has a value of a massive $11.9 billion and trades at a price earnings ratio of 61 times. This shows that investors have high hopes for the profitability of Auckland Airport going forwards and will hopefully return to paying dividends once it returns to stable profitability in 2023. Sixth, we have Chorus, which operates telecommunication infrastructure throughout the country, such as the fiber internet network. The company was founded in 2008 and is headquartered in Wellington and is known for being an incredibly safe and stable stock, with revenues barely fluctuating over the past five years at around $950. $50 million. The company has a market value of $3.64 billion, it pays a dividend yield of 4.89% per annum, and it trades at a PE ratio of 74 times. The seventh company is Contact Energy, which is the second largest electricity generator in New Zealand. They operate a network of renewable and fossil power assets, including hydroelectric, geothermal, gas, and even operate a backup diesel plant. It was founded in 1995 and is headquartered in Wellington. The business generates an annual revenue of $2.4 billion, it has over a thousand employees, and a current market value of just over $6 billion. It pays a dividend yield of about 4.5% and trades at a PE ratio of 33. Eighth is Ebos Group, which is the largest Australasian marketer, wholesaler, and distributor of healthcare, medical, and animal care products. They own many well-known brands, including Pharmacy Choice, Red Seal, Symbion, Life Healthcare, and Animates. It was founded in 1922. It's headquartered in Christchurch, and since 2018, they've grown revenue from about $7 billion a year to over 10. They have a market value of $8.6 billion, 
a dividend yield of 2.1% and traded a PE ratio of 37 times. If you see their stock price on the right hand side, this company has been a long time performer on the NZX. Next we have E-Road, which has developed a range of products to manage large vehicle fleets, especially for the trucking industry. The company was founded in the year 2000, is headquartered in Auckland and has an annual revenue of 110 million a year, having more than doubled since 2018. The company currently has a market value of just under $100 million. However, this has declined significantly over the past year in the broader market sell-off. The company doesn't currently make a profit and as such, it doesn't pay a dividend either. Unless its market cap recovers, Erode may struggle to maintain its position in the NZX50 index. Next is Fisher & Paykel Healthcare, which is a global leader in the manufacturing of mainly respiratory and sleep medical devices. With the market value in excess of $13 billion, it is easily one of the largest companies on the NZX, with over 6,000 employees, servicing over 120 countries. It was founded in 1934, is headquartered in Auckland, and its revenue sits at around $1.6 billion a year. It pays a dividend yield on its current stock price of 1.71%, and trades at a PE ratio of nearly 54 times. Next up is Fletcher Building, which of course is a dominant player in New Zealand's supply of building materials, as well as being a house developer through their Fletcher living arm. They also operate the brand's placemakers, Laminex, Jib and Winstone. The company was founded in 1909, is headquartered in Auckland and hires over 14,500 people. It has also had pretty stable revenue over recent years of around $8.5 billion a year. Fletcher's also has a market value of $3.7 billion, trades at a PE ratio of 9.8 times and pays a dividend yield of around 8.3%. Next is Fonterra Shareholders Fund, which are an interesting feature in the NZX50 index as it doesn't behave like a traditional stock would. The fund owns an economic right to Fonterra stock and by investing in the fund, you're investing in a copycat Fonterra stock. This is because Fonterra is a cooperative and its stock can only be held by its farmers. If Fonterra pays a dividend, the fund shares this with the unit holders as well. In 2022, they pay total dividends of 20 cents, giving it a dividend yield of about 6% on the current price. Next is Freightways, which is a logistics company for New Zealand, operating businesses including New Zealand Couriers, Big Chill, Post Haste and Sub60, among others. The company was founded in 1964, is headquartered in Auckland and has an annual revenue of just over $800 million a year. This has grown from just under $600 million in 2018. It has a market value of $1.69 billion, pays a dividend yield of 3.86% and trades at a PE ratio of around 22 times. Next is Genesis Energy, which like Contact is another large supplier of electricity in New Zealand. They are the largest retailer of electricity and natural gas, but only the third largest generator. Along with their renewable electricity assets, they also operate the Huntley Coal Plant. It was founded in 1999, is headquartered in Auckland and has a revenue of just under $3 billion. The company has a market value of $2.8 billion, pays a dividend yield of 6.7% and trades at a PE ratio of 12.4 times. Next is Goodman Property Trust, which has a $4.9 billion real estate portfolio, mainly in the industrial sector. It was founded in 1999, is headquartered in Auckland and generates annual revenue from property management of over $150 million a year. In the past year, due to the rapid increase in real estate values, they also booked another $600 million as a revaluation gain. The company has a market value currently of $2.8 billion, a PE ratio of 12 times, and pays out an annual dividend of 3.35%. Next is Heartland Group, which runs Heartland Bank. They operate both here in New Zealand and over in Australia, and are known mainly for their car lending arm Merrick, their reverse mortgages, and other miscellaneous business lending products. The group was put together in 2018, is headquartered in Auckland, and has an annual revenue of about $250 million. They have a market value of $1.27 billion, trade at a PE ratio of 11.22 times, and pay a healthy dividend of 6.08%. Next is Infratil, which is a large infrastructure investment company that invests in the key assets of the future, including renewable energy, digital assets, healthcare and airports. Currently, they have large ownership stakes in Manawa Energy, CDC data centres, Vodafone New Zealand and Wellington Airport. Infratil was founded in 1994, is headquartered in Wellington and in the latest financial year they made an annual revenue of $860 million. 
They currently trade at a PE ratio of 14.2 times, pay a dividend yield of 2.17% and have a market value of $6.3 billion. As you can see from the chart, Infratil has been a long time performer on the New Zealand exchange. Next is Investor Property, which invests in large format commercial real estate assets. The company was founded in 2015, is headquartered in Auckland and makes a little over 60 million a year in revenue. It has a market value of 550 million, trades at a PE ratio of 16.58 times and pays a dividend yield of 6.2%. Next is another property company, Kiwi Property Group, which runs several malls including Sylvia Park, Westgate, The Base and Northlands, among a few others. The company was founded in 1992, is headquartered in Auckland and generates an annual revenue of about 250 million a year. It has a market value of $1.4 billion and from the chart on the right, it appears their stock is a good proxy for the economy. Being linked to retail malls, of course, you can see the drops in 2008 and 2020 when the economy was in poor shape. Next, we have KMD Brands, which operate the retail outdoor stores Kathmandu, Rip Curl and Oboz. Founded in 1987 and headquartered in Christchurch, KMD is a growing company with a revenue doubling between 2018 and 2022 to just under a billion in annual revenue today. The company has a market value of 725 million, it trades at a PE ratio of 20 times and it pays a dividend yield of 5.83%. Next is Main Freight, which is similar to Freightways but is a lot larger with a market value of 6.6 .6 billion. They offer warehousing, logistics and transport solutions to clients around the world but mainly serve the New Zealand, Australian and North American markets. They were founded in 1978, are headquartered in Auckland and in the last financial year they made a revenue in excess of $5 billion with a net income in excess of 300 million. It currently pays a dividend yield of 2.56%, trades at a PE ratio of 15 times, and over time has been a stable growth company that is favoured by many investors. Next is Manawa Energy, formerly known as Trust Power, which is one of the smaller electricity generators in New Zealand. They focus on renewable energy generation in New Zealand, mainly through hydroelectric dams, but also have interests in wind and solar assets. They were founded in 1915, changed their name last year as they sold their retail business and are headquartered in Tauranga. They have an annual turnover of just over 300 million a year, a market value of 1.5 billion, trade at a PE ratio of 14 times and pay an annual dividend yield of 4.7%. A large owner of Manawa is Infratil, which we covered earlier, owning 51% of the business. Next is Mercury NZ, which is another fully renewable electricity generator in New Zealand. They have hydroelectric, wind and geothermal assets that generate a revenue in excess of 2.1 billion a year. They acquired the Trust Power retail arm off of Manawa Energy last year. It was founded in 1998, is headquartered in Auckland and has a market value of 7.87 billion. It pays a dividend yield on its current pricing of 3.58% and trades at a PE ratio of 16.2 times. The third similarly named electricity generator and the fifth in total on the New Zealand exchange is Meridian Energy. They too operate a renewable energy grid including hydroelectric and wind assets mainly in the South Island. They were founded in 1998, are headquartered in Wellington and generate an annual revenue of around 3 .7 billion. With a market value of $13.68 billion, they're the largest electricity generator on the exchange. They trade at a PE ratio of 20.6 times and pay an annual dividend of 3.2%. Now moving away from power companies, we have the stock market itself, NZX Limited. Their main operations are not only limited to the management of the stock exchange itself, but also offer a range of investment products, including the market leading smart shares ETFs. The company was founded in 2002 and is of course headquartered in Wellington at its namesake offices. They generate an annual revenue of just under 88 million and have a market value of 380 million. They trade at a PE ratio of 24 times and pay an annual dividend yield of 5%. NZX has benefited over recent years with the increasing knowledge of investing and ease of access to the market through the likes of Sharesies. Next is Oceania Healthcare, which offer retirement villages with a greater focus on healthcare and assisted living than the other providers on the exchange. They were founded in 2008, are headquartered in Auckland and have a growing revenue year over year, now standing at 230 million. Currently, they have a market value of 569 million trade at a PE ratio of 15 times and pay an annual dividend yield of 5.45%. Next up is Pacific Edge, which also work in the healthcare space by creating innovative cancer detection technology. 
They were founded in 2001, are headquartered in Dunedin, and have modest revenues of about 13 million a year. Sales growth is in the double digits for this company, and it currently does not turn over a profit, nor pay a dividend. It currently has a market value of 400 million, and as you can see on the right hand side, has had a volatile stock price. This can be very typical in the healthcare space, as the industry is heavily dependent on regulatory approvals and change. Next is the Port of Tauranga, which of course operates the cargo and shipping port based in Tauranga. They were founded in 1985, a base of course in Tauranga and have annual revenues of 375 million a year. The company currently trades at a market value of 4.25 billion, trades at a PE ratio of 37 times and pays a dividend yield of 2.3% a year. Over recent years, as you can see on the chart to the right, the stock price has been steadily increasing. However, it began to fall throughout 2021 and 2022. Next is Precinct Properties, which manage landmark office towers in Auckland and Wellington CBDs, including the PwC Tower, ANZ Centre and the HSBC House. They generate annual revenues of 200 million and have a market value of $2 billion. They pay an annual dividend yield of 5.3% and trade at a PE ratio of nearly 18 times. Next is Property for Industry, which as its name suggests, invests in industrial property in most major centres across the country. Many other listed companies in New Zealand are among their largest tenants, including Fletcher Building, EBOS and Main Freight. The company was founded in 1993, is headquartered in Auckland and generates a revenue of a little over 100 million a year. It has a market value of 1.1 billion pays an annual dividend of 4.33% and trades at a PE ratio of 5 times, owing to the recent increase in real estate values. Next is Pushpay Holdings, which is a large donor management system provider to charities and places of worship, mainly in the United States. It was founded in 2011, is headquartered in Auckland, and has revenues in excess of 200 million a year, which has grown substantially over recent years. It has a market value of 1.47 billion and trades at a PE ratio of 43 times. As the company is heavily focused on organic growth and inorganic growth through acquisitions, the company does not currently pay a dividend. Next is Restaurant Brands New Zealand, which operate a range of fast food brands such as KFC, Pizza Hut, Starbucks, Taco Bell and Carl's Jr. in New Zealand, Australia and Hawaii. It was founded in 1997, is headquartered in Auckland and has annual revenue in excess of 1.1 billion. That's a lot of fast food. The company has a market value of 697 million, trades at a PE ratio of 21 and pays an annual dividend yield of 5.7%. Next is Ryman Healthcare, which develop and manage retirement villages in New Zealand and Australia. It was founded in 1984, is headquartered in Christchurch, and has an annual revenue of 500 million a year. They've also been a large beneficiary of increasing real estate prices, with their PE ratio being artificially inflated to just under five times. This is because for many of these real estate based companies, they can realise the gains made on property as income to elevate their earnings. Ryman has a market value of 2.8 billion and pays an annual dividend yield on its current traded price of 4%. Next is Sanford, which is a large player in New Zealand's seafood and aquaculture industry, especially in salmon and mussels. The company was founded all the way back in 1881, is headquartered in Auckland down by the fish market and has an annual revenue in excess of 500 million. It has a market value of 392 million, trades at a PE ratio of 6 times and pays an annual dividend yield of 2.4%. Next is Scales, which provides logistics to the export sector for food and horticulture, as well as being a fully integrated apple grower through its Mr. Apple brand. It was founded in 1897, is headquartered in Christchurch, and generates an annual revenue of $500 million. It has a market value of $568 million, trades at a PE ratio of 22 times, and pays an annual dividend yield of just under 4%. Next is Serco, which provide corporate travel and expense management software to businesses. It was founded in 2007, is headquartered in Auckland, and generates annual revenue of $17 million. They don't currently turn a profit as they're building up the business, and therefore they don't currently pay a dividend. Serco has a market value of 275 million, and as you can see on the right, their stock price has had a volatile few years during the pandemic. Next is Scalarup Holdings, which has a diversified portfolio of companies across a range of industries. Beyond just manufacturing red band gum boots, they also build a range of products and machinery catering to the industrial and dairy sectors. They were founded in 1910, are headquartered in Auckland, and generate a revenue in excess of 300 million a year. They pay a healthy annual dividend yield of 3.8%, have a market value of just over a billion dollars and are trading at a PE ratio of 22 times. 
Next is Sky Network Television, which is New Zealand's main pay television provider for a range of channels. It was founded in 1987, is headquartered in Auckland, and generates revenue in excess of $700 million a year. If you go back a few years, the company struggled to make a profit, but more recently has managed to return to decent profitability. It has a market value of $345 million, trades at a PE ratio of 5.4 times, and pays an annual dividend yield of around 3.7%. On the right hand side, you can see that the stock price is at a wild ride, despite its return to profitability, but now has new management to take the company forwards. Next is Sky City Entertainment Group, which operated a number of casino, hotel, hospitality and convention assets in New Zealand and Australia. They were founded in 1996 and are headquartered in Auckland. In the most recent financial year, they generated revenues of over $500 million. However, they turned over a slight loss, somewhat influenced by the pandemic and 2021 lockdowns, which would have disrupted their patronage. Currently, they have a market value of $1.9 billion. Next is Spark, which is one of New Zealand's largest providers of telecommunication services, such as mobile and internet connections. It was founded in 1987, is headquartered in Auckland, and is a consistent revenue earner, with a $3.7 billion turnover in the last financial year. It has a market value of just over $10 billion. It trades at a PE ratio of 24 times and pays out a dividend yield of 4.72%. Next is Stride Group, which owns a diversified real estate portfolio of office, retail and industrial properties throughout New Zealand, including the Northwest Mall in Auckland. They were founded in 2016, are headquartered in Auckland and generate annual revenues of over $170 million. They have a market value of $770 million and pay an annual dividend yield of just under 8% based on the latest stock price. Next is Somerset Group Holdings, which is similar to Ryman Healthcare in that they operate a range of retirement villages throughout New Zealand. It was founded in 1994, is headquartered in Wellington, and has annual revenues of around 200 million a year. Like the other real estate companies on the exchange, they too have seen a one-off hike in earnings in 2022. As such, they currently trade at a PE ratio of five times and pay an annual dividend yield of just over 2%. They also have a market value of 2.1 billion. Next is Sinlake Milk, which is a New Zealand manufacturer of milk powder products. It was founded in 2005, is headquartered in Rakaia in Canterbury, and has annual revenues of 1.6 billion. It has a market value of 791 million, trades at a PE ratio of 20 times, and does not currently pay a dividend. Next is the A2 Milk Company, which sell a range of milk and dairy products. The company specializes in selling milk that excludes A1 protein from the final products, leaving just A2 protein, which makes it easier to drink for those with lactose intolerance. The company is a large exporter, and its products can be found around the world. A2 Milk was founded in the year 2000, is headquartered in Auckland, and has annual revenues of $1.4 billion. The company was heavily impacted during the pandemic as their grey market sellers stopped exporting product, but are starting to bounce back which is reflected in their stock price. It has a market value of 5.4 billion, it trades at a PE ratio of 45 times and is yet to start paying dividends. Next is The Warehouse Group, which operates a range of lifestyle retail brands in New Zealand including The Warehouse, Warehouse Stationery, Noel Leeming, Torpedo 7 and The Market. It was founded in 1982, is headquartered in Auckland, and has stable revenue of $3.3 billion. Warehouse Group currently has a market value of $915 million, trades at a PE ratio of 10 times, and pays an annual dividend yield of 7.5%. Next is Tourism Holdings, which operate a range of tourism assets and brands. Among its businesses includes Campervan Rentals, Motorhome Manufacturing, the Kiwi Experience Bus, and the Waitomo Cave Tours and Experiences. It was founded in 1984, is headquartered in Auckland, and generates annual revenues of $345 million. It has a market value of $761 million, however due to the pandemic they are not currently making a profit and as such are unable to pay a dividend. Next is Vector, which is an electricity and gas distribution company. It was founded in 1994, is headquartered in Auckland, and has annual revenue of $1.3 billion. Vector has a market value of $4.1 billion, trades at a PE ratio of 26 times, and in the past year has paid a dividend yield of 4%, based on the current pricing. Next is Vista Group International, which supplies software through its seven portfolio companies to the global film industry. It has provided its software to cinemas in over 100 countries, and this allows it to generate annual revenues in excess of $100 million. It was founded in 2003, is headquartered in Auckland, and has a market value of $356 million. Next is Vital Healthcare Property Trust, which is a real estate investment fund that invests in health and medical properties both in New Zealand and Australia. It was founded in 1994, is headquartered in Auckland, and has a portfolio worth $3.3 In the most recent financial year, 
Vital earned property income of 123 million and realized a gain on its property of 300 million. Vital has a market value of $1.5 billion, trades at a PE ratio of four times and pays an annual dividend yield of 3.75%. And finally, we have Westpac Bank, which like ANZ Bank, offers a range of financial services in New Zealand and Australia. It was founded in 1817, is headquartered in Sydney, Australia, and has annual revenues of about $20 billion a year. It has a market value of $88 billion, trades at a PE ratio of 15 times, and pays an annual dividend yield of 5.35%. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all my future content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.